The repelling tower on Marine Base Camp Pendleton in Southern California's coastal scrublines was large wooden, flat-faced, square, and entirely intimidating. It looked like a Viking Age siege machine. I and a few, a few dozen other midshipmen were seated cross-legged in front of a Marine sergeant. He was barrel-chested and altogether serious, with an already kind of angry look on his face. The sergeant intended to train us in repelling. I got the impression that training midshipmen was not what he joined the Corps to do. Midshipmen was the rank given to future Navy and Marine Corps officers in training. Every summer, we spent a few weeks with active duty fleet units as part of our training. This summer, my second of three summers in officer training, we were spending one of those weeks with the Marines. It was a chance to both give us training we'd need to be successful officers and also for the Marine Corps to pitch itself as a career option for us when we finally selected our service. As for me, I wanted to drive ships or fly airplanes for the Navy. To get there, I had to successfully complete my training as a midshipman, even this week with the Marines. Most of the Marines who had been training us that week were combat veterans of Desert Storm, which had been less than two years before. The sergeant covered how the repelling seat would be rigged once we were atop the tower, how we needed to listen to the Marines who were up there and follow their directions, how to move our feet and our brake hand. I wasn't gonna become a Marine officer, and I suspected Marines hardly ever found themselves repelling into combat anyway. Besides, we were still two years from being commissioned, so we'd surely forget whatever they taught us about repelling by then. Maybe this was just a recruiting gimmick. Join the Marines, it'll be fun. Well, whatever. There had been other things in my training thus far that I had thought of as having limited future value. This might be cool. I'd never gone repelling before and it sounded exciting, though the tower, now that I was close to it, seemed awfully tall. People have, and occasionally still do, managed to injure, maim, or even kill themselves on these towers, the sergeant said. It's hard, but it's possible. I hope to God one of you won't. Personally, I wouldn't care. But apparently the taxpayer has already spent a shit ton of money for your cushy schooling, so it'd be a waste of their investment if it went splat at the bottom of my tower. Plus the paperwork. Damn, there'd be a lot of paperwork. I ain't got time for that. Fortunately for us, if you listen to my Marine instructors and do what they say, you won't go splat. At least one of you won't listen. One of you sitting in front of me right now will not move your feet like I told you and get yourself upside down. I guarantee it. When that happens, you could fall out of your seat. And I already told you, I ain't got time for the paperwork. So listen and move your feet. There's so many of you, we likely only have time for one down each. Questions? We had none. If the sight of the tall tower up close had started to make me feel a bit anxious about this, the sergeant's brief kept that going. Now, which of you are afraid of heights? I didn't raise my hand. I wasn't afraid of heights. Somebody's hand went up. Okay, you're first. Get your ass up to the top of the tower. That struck me as mildly cruel. But I had seen worse petty cruelty in my training before. It seemed to be part of the gig. There was a brief moment of silence while the guy who raised his hand entertained a fantasy that the sergeant was joking. Then he reluctantly got up and went to the side of the tower. Groups quickly followed the one who was afraid of heights and started rappelling down. Some quickly, some slowly, some in big jumps, some in tiny jumps, but down they came. When the first midshipman got to the bottom, the sergeant asked him, are you still afraid of heights? He nodded, breathing heavily. Yes, sergeant. Well, Get your ass back up there. You guys, wait, wait. This one goes again next. I shook my head to myself. As the procession continued, we'd cheer or jeer as our friends came down with varying levels of grace, but mostly we just chatted amongst ourselves while waiting our turn. Ah, damn it, the sergeant said. I looked up at the tower. At the top, a Marine was leaning out over the edge, looking down. About six feet below him, still near the top of the tower, a midshipman, not the one afraid of heights, hung perfectly upside down. His heels, butt, and back flat against the face of the tower. He was frozen, eyes staring straight out from the wall. His hands were visibly white from the death grip he was maintaining on the rope. Look at me, look at me, the Marine shouted down from the top. The midshipman didn't react. Uh, what's his name, the Marine shouted down to us. The name was provided and he tried again with the name. This time, the midshipman looked up past his feet at the Marine. Good job, 
Now, if you can do that, you can get out of this. You just have to listen to me and do what I say, just like, I, just like you did just now. Take your right foot and slide it down towards your butt, putting it flat, no, no, your other right foot. Now push out and no, wait, um, okay, good job. The midshipman managed to get on his feet and the Marine talked him through repelling the rest of the way down. When he got to the bottom, the sergeant unhooked him and said, you did it. Now, even if we have time, that's it for you today. Another landed right next to them, finishing a rappel. Still afraid? The sergeant asked the new arrival. Yes, sergeant. You know what to do. The midshipman's shoulders dropped. Without a word, he headed toward the side of the tower to go up again, his face as pale as the first time. The sergeant shook his head and chuckled. Then it was my turn to climb. At the side of the tower, the ladder approved, proved to at the side of the tower, the ladder proved to be just boards nailed to the side. There wasn't much room to grip with fingers or place feet, but I started the climb up. It was even further than it looked from the ground. About halfway up, I glanced down and a shot of adrenaline popped through me. It already looked high enough that if I slipped, I'd be in for broken legs. I tried to push that out of my head and kept climbing. None of the trees I had climbed as a kid had this far of an unobstructed drop. To my dismay, there was also nothing special to help the transition from the side to the top, no handles or anything. My fingers found a small crack and with my heart pounding, I awkwardly pulled myself on my stomach to the top. I stood and my head swam. The top of the tower was completely flat. I had assumed that the three sides that weren't used for repelling would have rails. They didn't. I didn't know why that bothered me so much, but boy did it. The ground seemed very far below. A fall would definitely kill me. Nothing was preventing me from toppling over the side. Someone could back up, not seeing me, and accidentally push me over. Then the tower itself began to sway, tilting crazily. My brain urged me to stop it. I reminded myself that the tower was not swaying. I was just reacting poorly. I stared at the edge of the tower and noted the spot on the ground beyond it in my line of sight. It didn't move. It wasn't swaying. With this proof, I forced myself to stare out at the horizon and breathe. It was actually a nice view. This worked. I felt a little better. My heart was definitely pounding. Maybe I was afraid of heights and I had never known it. I turned and took the short steps toward the Marine who was rigging everyone's seats. That only took a couple of minutes. The rig was far simpler than I expected. Really just a piece of rope wrapped around me in between my legs in a special way that I'd never remember. I wondered if it would really hold me. The Marine handed me the carabiner to hold up to keep things situated on my body properly until I was hooked up. I noticed my hand was shaking when I took it. If he noticed, he didn't say anything. I turned toward a Marine at the edge, one of two sending midshipmen over in two lanes. I wasn't having any fun at this point. I wanted off that tower. There was only one way. The guy in front of me finished his rappelling and the Marine at the edge walked toward me. He gave my rig a second check, then he hooked up the rope to my carabiner. I grabbed the line trailing behind me in my brake hand and the line in front of me with the other like I was told. Okay, piece of cake, you're all hooked up. Turn around and back toward the edge until your heels are over, and when I say go, jump off. Once you're stable, look up at me, and I'll tell you to continue rappelling down. Got it? I nodded and started backing up toward the edge. My knees felt weak. The rope in front of me snaked across the top of the tower to the anchor point. It seemed like far too much slack. A vision appeared to me. I could bring in all that slack, get the line taut against my carabiner. Then, instead of leaping off the top, I could ease myself over the edge. I would feel the security of the line. I could test it with a little bit of pull before I trusted my life with it. Relief swept over me. I could do it that way. I was safe. Without thinking further, I pulled in the rope with my front hand, stinking it out the back with my brake hand. The slack, satisfy, satis, uh, the slack satisfyingly started to disappear. A puzzled look passed over the Marine's face. Wait, what? No, oh, no, no, no. He strode toward me, grabbed the rope out of my hand, and gave it a big yank. It flowed back through my hands and spilled into a slack pile on the top of the tower. You don't need any of that crap. 
He slapped his open hand on my chest and closed his fist and twisted, grabbing a whole knot in my uniform shirt. And he pushed me back until my heels felt the edge. Then he kept pushing. I kept my feet on the edge, legs and back ramrod straight as my head and torso were pushed out at an angle over the ground. See, I got you here. He pushed and pulled me back and forth over the precipice as I tilted on my straight legs and frozen feet. I pictured tumbling head over heels as he threw me off the tower, but he didn't do that. Then my mind pictured his grip accidentally slipping. I stopped breathing. See, I got you. See, you don't need that. Perfectly safe. He was shaking his head slightly. One of his eyes was open wider than the other. His eyebrow arched high. He pulled me back upright and released me, stepping back a few steps to where he was standing before and gave the rope another yank loose for good measure. Then he stood, arms folded, and watched me closely. There was even more slack in front of me now than there was before my attempt at fixing it. My knees went from weak to shaking. Now, back up so your heels are over the edge, and when I say jump, jump. I backed up till my heels were over the edge, trying my best not to think. Jump, the Marine said. I didn't. I looked back down at all that slack on the top of the tower. I tried to calculate whether I could pull the slack in and ease myself over the side before he reacted. I tried to calculate what would happen if I refused to go. Would he throw me off? Would, he, would I fail the training? Would I have to figure out how to get back on that treacherous excuse for a ladder? My heart's banging and my chest started to become overpowering. My mouth dry as sandpaper. I felt a little sick. I looked up at the Marine. His eyes narrowed and I made a choice. I stepped backwards off the tower. I dropped with an awful suddenness and acceleration. The side of the tower rushed up past my field of view. I thought it should catch, but it didn't. My breath did and I continued to accelerate. The wood side of the tower a blur, the sound of air rushing past my ears when I was sure it never would. The rope caught with a jerk. I stopped falling and swung toward the tower where my feet landed solidly with a thud in the perfect repelling position. Though I hadn't thought about any of it, my brake hand was in the right place, my front hand was good, my feet were right where they were supposed to be, and I was perched safe and sound. I bounced slightly in my rigged seat. Exhilaration surged through me like a tsunami, drowning out all fear under its joy. I had done it. I wasn't sure I could, but I had done it. I had remembered what they had taught me and had done it without thinking, and it had saved my life. I had taken the leap. I had done something I was afraid of. I was king of the world, high on the endorphins pumping through me. If I could do this, I could do anything. I looked up toward the Marine with my face fixed firmly in the platonic shape of triumph. What do you want? A cookie? Repel down. Ha ha, I had bested him too. I looked down and pushed off slightly, moving my brake hand out and dropping a foot or two. And moving my brake hand back, I swung back to the tower. I repeated, this was fun. I shoved out hard and let myself fall for a good stretch. This time the acceleration filled me with happiness. All too soon I was on the ground. The tower wasn't tall enough. I'll go again, the sergeant, I told this. I'll go again, I told the sergeant. Don't think there's time, he said, motioning me to sit back down with the others who had gone already. I joined them, joking and laughing and reveling in this new shared experience. The sergeant stood before us again. Well, none of you died, so I don't have any extra paperwork and I'm grateful about that last part. We laughed. Now, where's my freight of heights? I looked down at my lap. When is enough? I felt bad for my fellow midshipmen. I didn't want to listen to what would come next. He raised his hand once again, surely feeling more dread about it than me. I want to tell you something. You listening? He nodded. You did outstanding today. I looked back up. I know it's hard to be honest like that, especially in front of your peers. And when the consequences of your honesty weren't pleasant, you kept right on being honest anyway. Since I knew you were afraid, I could watch you perform under stress. You did everything right and never called it quits. Stubborn integrity, courage, ability to build, ah, stubborn integrity, courage, ability to listen, think, and act under pressure. What the hell else could I want in my officer? And you already have it. We were wrapped. The midshipman gaped at him. Shit, I've seen enough. If you ordered me to, I'd follow you into battle this very night. And I hope you consider becoming a Marine, so someday we can do that together 
you and me. Hoorah, the other Marines barked, and we tried to imitate. The midshipman was smiling sheepishly. Someone knocked his hat off. Another shouted, teacher's pad. The sergeant smiled and said, see you all in the fleet. We boarded the buses. I never repelled again in my military career, but there were other fearful days in my future. That time we had to climb a boarding ladder mid-ocean without a lee as night fell and the weather worsened. Near collisions with me on the bridge of my ship. That storm in the South China Sea when I thought the bow might just snap off. Those dark nights on the Egyptian coast just after 9-11. Those terrible couple of days in Afghanistan. Other days when I would need to lean on my trust in my shipmates and in my training. Days when I would need to lean on my trust that fear was not a weakness that needed to stop me from functioning. It would be a few years before I really appreciated, before it really sunk in, that we hadn't gone to that tower to learn anything about repelling. Thanks for listening to my lessons. <laughs>